My name is Lund, Scott Lund, and you're listening to a red carpet of Hollywood celebrity interview, a production of We Got You Media, broadcast by News of the World via Eurosatellite on cable networks and available through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, where we greatly appreciate your likes and shares. My special guest today is American actor Ryan Carnes, who has recently starred in a hilarious breakout comedy, Valentina's Wedding. It is a Mexican-American crossover film called La Boda de Valentina in Spanish. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Thanks, Scott. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. Uh, I understand your film is the most popular one in Mexico right now, and it's broken box office records. Is that right? Um, we were the number one film in Mexico when we first came out and when we hit theaters. Uh, we got knocked off by Black Panther, but I, I don't think there's anybody in the world that didn't get knocked off by Black Panther. Um, and uh, and then within the first month, I think it was about after, after about four weeks of release in theaters, we had become the number 10 film in Mexican film history. Wow. So... That's huge. Yeah, so so we we had a very yeah, we had a very warm reception in Mexico for sure. Wonderful. And I understand it opened in about 40 theaters in Los Angeles and 400 theaters nationwide. Correct. Well, I want to talk more about your new movie, but I'd like to establish your interesting background for our listeners. You grew up on a rural farm in Illinois and wound up at Duke University where you were a member of Dumb. What was that all about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's correct. Um, well, I, I did. I grew up on a, on a pig farm, actually, in Illinois, uh, a, a small pig farm. You know, we weren't like one of those um, industrial hog confinement type operations. We, we were, you know, I, I don't remember how many pigs we had, probably a couple hundred, something like that. It's a lot. And um, I just helping my dad feed pigs and riding in the tractors and combines with them. And that's how I learned how to drive a stick, was by driving tractors. <laughs> and uh, when I left my hometown, I, I went to, to Durham, North Carolina, where Duke is. And I really didn't know what I wanted to major in. I, I had no idea what my major was going to be. I knew that, or at least I thought that I wanted to go to law school. By that time, by the time I got to college, I was, I was pretty set on that. I, I didn't really know what kind of law. I just had this sense of wanting to be a part of the solution rather than the problem. And I, I had a sense of wanting to help see justice. Mm-hmm. But you're a member uh, of Dumb. While I was there, <laughs> please I explain that. Yes, yes. So For that's, those that don't that's know, that's the marching Duke band. University Marching Band, D U M B. And I'm trying to get at your interest with uh, percussion and drumming, for which you are quite good, I understand. Yeah, I don't know. I've been doing it a long time. Um, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, I started when I was six, and my parents were kind enough to buy me a drum set. And um, we, for a long time, that drum set lived in our living room. <laughs> um, well, you know, that's, that's where it did its living. And we were always just really supportive. And so I got to Duke, and I was sort of trying to figure things out and, and trying a bunch of different majors before I finally settled on public policy. But while I was there, I, I did. Um, I auditioned for the Duke University Marching Band, and, and I, I was able to, to be a part of that. That we, that we did affectionately refer to as dumb, um, so, because how can you not? <laughs> so basically we have dumb and drummer, which sounds like a great name for a movie. <laughs> Maybe Jim Carrey could co-star with you. <laughs> Uh, in 2004, you had your first big break, becoming the ninth actor to portray Lucas Jones on the ABC soap opera General Hospital. What was the sequence of events that led up to you landing that role? Talk me through it. The role of Lucas Jones came up, and I went in, and I auditioned, and um, I had a vacation planned to Hawaii. And, you know, how, how this thing works in, in this career and with, with auditions, you go and, and, I mean, at least what I try to do is I try to just forget about it at this point. When I was much younger, uh, it was really hard to forget about auditions that I'd gone on because as a young actor, I think there's a tendency to, to think that we're right for every single job and 
oh, I want that one, I want that one, and what if I don't get called back? And, you know, it, it, it gets a little bit crazy. And so I had a vacation planned to Hawaii. So, you know, I, I told my manager, even though the callback was sort of looming, but I hadn't got word that I was even being called back yet, I said to my manager, I said, you know, I, I've got a, I've got a ticket. I, I'd really like to go to Hawaii, <laughs> you know? And he goes, yeah, it's, it's fine. Just go ahead. So I left and I'm sit, I'm, I remember the day really clearly. I'm sitting on the beach in Hawaii and my phone rings, my cell phone, you know, at the time, it's just like cell phones were, were really different. Mm -hmm. I had like an antenna. I had to like pull out my little <laughs> antenna and, um, it was my manager and he says, well, guess what? As luck would have, he got a call back for this thing, uh, for this general hospital thing. They they need you, and there's like they need you in two days or something. Call back in two days. And there's a joke as an actor: if if you want to get a job, plan a trip. But you can't you can't do it as a manipulation. You have to do it genuinely. You, have to, you, you live your life, plan a trip, book a ticket, make plans, and lo and behold, you'll get a job, or you know some, something will happen. And that used to happen a lot to me, actually. So, of course, I planned a vacation. I go on the vacation, then I get the call, right? So I said to my manager, I said, well, I don't, I really don't want to leave this beach, you know? I don't, I don't want to cut my vacation short. <laughs> is, there, is, there anything, is there anything we can do? And he goes, well, let me check. So he called me and said, look, you guys are really familiar with Ryan's work at this point. You, you've had him in a number of times. You've been close on some things. Um, can you just take him straight to producers instead of doing the callback? Well, Mark Teschner, God bless him, agreed. So I got to stay in Hawaii, finish out my vacation, and I got back to LA in time for the producer session. So Smart. that's not all. I'm on my way, I'm driving to the audition, I'm on the five freeway, and all of a sudden, whoa, 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 five tires. <laughs> So I pull over on the side of the freeway. I call one of the other managers in, in my management company's office. I told him what happened. He was just sit, stay there, I'll be right there. He came, he picked me up. We left my car on the side of the road with a note. He drove me the rest of the way to Prospect Studios to the producer session. I walked in, I don't know, half an hour late, 45 minutes late. And I walked in the room and I just said, hey guys, sorry. Um, I guess you heard what happened. Here I am. Uh, you know, let's let's do it. And, and I think, and I ended up getting the role. And I think that sometimes things like that are like the best thing that can happen to an actor because it it, 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 it disarms us. It gets us out of our heads. Mm -hmm. At least for me, you know, things like that get me out of my head. It gets me it gets me present and it gets me real and it gets me like just kind of in 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 whatever is happening rather than you know like being up in my head and thinking oh my god are they going to like me am I going to do well am I going to get that moment right and whatever for whatever reason it worked and, and I got the role and became the tonight's Lucas show well this was your big break did some people think you were a real doctor I don't think I've ever had anybody come up to me and, and, and genuinely think that I was a medical doctor and, and could, could actually help improve their health. But, but they, uh, there's no shortage of jokes <laughs> around that, that's for sure. Now, you're known for a recurring role as Justin in the TV series Desperate Housewives back in 2004. And in 2006, you were in the movie Letters from Iwo Jima. But in between, you played a very unique character named Laszlo in the sci-fi series Doctor Who. And they made you into an action figure toy. You were a half human, half pig slave, which I guess you had a background for having grown up on a pig farm. Yeah, Ryan, I've got to tell you, I was, <laughs> I was very reticent about Googling a picture of that pig character you played. I knew that once I saw that picture, I would never be able to get the image out of my brain. And I was right. It will haunt me forever. <laughs> and I will never be able to look at bacon the yeah, same yeah. way again. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no problem. My pleasure. Um, but, you know, maybe maybe there's some pigs out there who will thank you. Um, 
Yeah, you can't really unsee it. <laughs> you can't really unsee it. And you can't really recognize you through the makeup. I mean, it's so convincing. No. It's, it's really something else. I, I hear, Ryan, that you had a cult following of fans who were really into your character. And... I have to ask, was there some kind of swine fetish thing going on with certain fans? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I think I think there's uh, I think there's a Doctor Who fetish more than there's maybe a swine fetish, <laughs> um, and, I, and I say that lovingly and, and jokingly uh -huh. um, because Doc, I mean Doctor Who is is yeah, I mean it might be one of the shows with the biggest cult following of any show mm -hmm. ever like real true cult following it's it's extraordinary i mean it's remarkable uh -huh. um, the, the show has, has been on for decades and and it's survived and it's evolved and and somebody you know i was in an uber recently with a man from london uh, he's a, my the, the driver mm -hmm. in london and mm -hmm. somehow he was asking me what i do and and uh you know we were talking about traveling and i mentioned london and wales and he said well, that can only mean one thing. That means that you must have been on Doctor Who. Wow. And I said, yeah, I, I was. And, and so he said, well, what season, who were you, and all this. And I, and I told him, and he, he went, there was this long pause. Okay. So, uh, so you're in the cab, and the cabbie all of a sudden has a long pause after he discovers that you were Laszlo, the pig boy slave on Doctor Who. Yes. He, he, there, there was this long pause uh, that, that oftentimes happens. It, it, it's happened before. If, if people, if, if the converse, if the topic about, um, I'm sorry, Def, Desperate Housewives ever comes up, you know, a lot of times people have said to me, um, "Oh, who, who, who did you play on that show?" You know, if, if that, if that becomes part of the conversation, and then I tell them. And then, I, and it's funny because I, I watch. It's like I can see the wheels turning, and I can see them doing the math, and like going back through the the, the film strip of their lives, and, <laughs> and you know their time watching the show. And so there's this long dramatic pause, and he and then he goes, "Oh, oh, oh my God! That's one of my favorite episodes ever." That's oh you that was the, the with the Daleks and I said yeah it was Daleks in Manhattan and it's like oh my gosh and he was he was so excited by it and <laughs> and even he as a as a Brit spoke to the the fact that that Doctor Who has has managed to survive for so long and evolve and you know now they've they they're bringing in a female Doctor I don't know if that new season has started yet but they're but they're making the Doctor female now. Mm. And so, you know, I think it's a testament to the show's adaptability and, and evolution. And also, he, he made a good point, too. He said, you know, for the longest time, part of the charm of that show was that, <laughs> you know, the, 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 there was so little money on that show. That one, one could actually see the set moving. Like, if you watched the show on your TV, you could see at certain times, like corners of the set, you could see things moving. And it was like, you so knew it wasn't real, and it, and it so took you out of what was going on, but that was part of the appeal, and that was part of what made Doctor Who Doctor Who. Wow. And so, yeah, I, I, I'm extremely honored to, to be a part of the, the extended Doctor Who family and, and to have gotten to, you know, even if they did turn me into a pig, to, <laughs> to have gotten to go do that, you know? And, and, I, and I, got, I got to work with David Tennant, who's a phenomenal actor and... and yeah, and, and a great guy. I couldn't have been nicer to work with. And, and Andrew Garfield. So, I mean, it, it was a pretty cool experience for me. You had a lifetime of being able to study the uh, characteristics of uh, swine <laughs> <laughs> to bring that into your role. So that must have been some advantage.